Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining in today. Uh, my name is Iftikhar and I'm really sorry that I have not been able to post any more videos uh, in the last few months. Actually, it's been a while like, uh, that I've created a video and posted it up here in this channel. Uh, but thank you so much for watching the existing content. I know some of you are uh, benefiting out of it and uh, some of the, you find them useful and I can see some of your comments there. I don't know if I have ever made this disclosure earlier that I am a Microsoft employee and I work with some of the largest organizations across Asia and help them with Microsoft Threat Protection Stack and Azure Sentinel. And yeah, this channel is all about how some of some of my experiences with working with this customer, some of the best practices that I've seen there, uh, and of course, uh, letting you all know about it so that you, if you are working on these technologies in your organizations uh, or for your customers, you should be able to uh, use them and you know get benefit out of it. I'm going to start a new series on some of the new capabilities that has been introduced in Office 365 ATP in, over the last you know, five to six months. Uh, and today I'm going to focus on how to implement an Office 365 ATP configurations in less than a minute. If you have seen my previous videos, uh, we've talked about the best practices and recommendations uh, in configuring Office 365 ATP safe attachments, safe links, and anti-phishing policies. Now we're going to look, take a look at how you can actually configure some of these policies in a in a much quicker way than what it was earlier. Uh, in a you know if you you can by using the preset configurations. So let's take a look at it. So I'm going to go to the Office 365 Security and Compliance portal to begin with. Uh, so protection.office.com and uh, this is the traditionally the Office 365 security and compliance portal where we have uh, configuration items for Office 365 threat protection stack. All right, so now here we are on the Office 365 security and compliance portal. And if I go to my threat management and go to policies right here, uh, earlier, we have to we used to create separate policies for anti-phishing, safe attachments, safe links, anti-spam, and anti-malware. Now, Microsoft has released this new capability where you can actually configure all these policies in just with just a couple of clicks using the preset security policy configurations. So, if I go here, there are actually two policy items. One is the standard protection, which basically gives you a a baseline protection for your majority of your users or maybe for the entire organization. And then there's a strict protection. So if you want to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of the kind of uh, mails that you would like to block and and, it, and you want it to be a little bit more aggressive than what it what it is earlier in the in the baseline, you know, from the baseline policy perspective, you can also do that. And these configurations are all presets so that, uh, you know, from the Microsoft's best practices perspective and from the recommendation perspective. So let's start with the standard policy here. So the, you know, one of the easiest way to do is just to just turn it on and you have options to, you know, edit it. And if I, if I go here in the edit, you basically gives you option that where you would like to deploy this EOP policies to. So the EOP policies are the standard policies for anti-spam, outbound spam filter, anti-malware and anti-phishing. And you can basically give it, it to either entire organization under a particular domain name or maybe a selective set of users or maybe certain users who are part of a particular group so you can basically use any of these uh, uh, any of these uh, filters so if you would like to set up these policies for a particular users in a particular you know who are a member of a particular domain or a group you can specify it all over here itself all right so i've already configured this uh, that you know if the domain is the zero day.com all the users in this particular domain should be should be protected with these policies of EOP. If I click next, similarly, you know, ATP policies. So the ATP policies is comprises of ATP safe attachments, ATP safe links, and of course, ATP anti-phishing. And then here also, again, I've configured them if the recipients are part of the domain of the zero day.com. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So within less than 30 seconds, your, your ATP policies, including the EOP policies are all configured. If I go here into my policies again, and if I go to my, let's say an anti-phishing policy, uh, a standard security policy is, is available and it is turned on. And you can see here that you know, these things are all turned on over here from the user's uh, uh, impersonation 
perspective, domain impersonation, safety tips, mailbox intelligence. And uh, yeah, the mailbox intelligence action and the domain impersonation action is basically sending the email to junk mailbox folder. Similarly, anti-spoof settings are turned on and the action is that whenever uh, email is detected as spoof, it should go into junk mailbox folder as well. Also, uh, there is the anti-phishing uh, threshold, uh, which is set to uh, number two aggress in the aggressive way. Uh, so yeah, so this is the priority. So this is how the standard policy is configured and all these policies are now applicable to all the users in my organization of this particular domain. <clears throat> Similarly, uh, there are configurations which are already configured uh, you know, for ATP safe attachments as well. So if I go to safe attachments policy, there is a there should be a you know ATP safe attachment standard preset policy already configured and it's turned on and you can see that you know the safe attachment uh, policy is here and it is right now blocking all the attachments which is detected as uh, malicious by detonating the attachment in the sandbox and uh, the redirect attachment to a different mailbox is currently disabled. Similarly, if I go back and show you the ATP safe links policy here, the safe link policies are also now configured with preset settings, uh, recommended settings for Microsoft. And if you see the settings over here, which says that this you know, ATP safe attachments URL scanning is enabled. So if a URL is basically pointing to an attachment or a file, not per se a website or a web page, uh, it should be detonated as well. Also wait for the URL scanning to be enabled or complete before it actually delivers a message. So if the email has URLs which are uh, malicious at the time of detonation uh, before the delivery of the email, then the email will have uh, scores which are higher or the spam score or the phishing scores which will be higher and then the email will be routed as per the configuration that you have set in the anti-spam policy. Uh, and of course, it also automatically enables all the safe links to emails which are sent within the organization from one mailbox to another, which are not explicitly going outside. And of course, uh, it doesn't really want to track the users who are clicking on it. So, you know, it is currently disabled. So we would like to track the users and of course, uh, who clicks on the URL and getting blocked. And then uh, we don't want users to basically bypass the, the block page that they receive by clicking on the continue anyway uh, you know link there so it is do not let users click through the original url it is enabled so these are standard set of policies which gets enabled by just simply turning it on all right so here all my policies of atp safe attachments safe links eop anti-spam they're all configured <clears throat> just by you know just turning on a you know, preset policy policy in the main page here in addition to that, we also have option to configure a more stricter policy for maybe a certain set of users, maybe your VIP users, where you would like to be a little bit more stricter than others because, of course, their risk profiles are different. They are more accustomed to get certain targeted phishing, targeted malware campaigns, and so on. So you may want to enable a strict policy for those set of users as well. So let me turn this off and let me show you what else we, we, have, we have here. So you can turn it on as well. And if I go to edit, let me show you how some of the policy configuration items looks like here. Again, you don't get to select the, the preset configuration. We just ask you where you would like to point these policies to. So if you don't want to point this policy to you know, all the people in the domain, you can also maybe give it to certain members of a particular, let's say, a VIP users. So you can actually either give their names or you can actually say that I only want uh, this particular use this particular policy to be maybe on you know on Alex uh, because probably you know he's a CFO so you can configure uh, this policies like that similarly uh, you know ATP policy as well I can configure this to be more targeted for a particular group of individuals or maybe a particular person in the organization or maybe the entire domain if you have that kind of risk profile that you think that your users should be should have more stricter uh, ATP policies as well, you can configure this as well. So yeah, so let me put it to, to Alex as well. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we have configured the ATP safe attachment, safe links, safe uh, anti phishing policies, including EOP uh, and uh, spam policies to all my users again, less than 30 seconds. And if I go to the policy items, we can review the policies here. So let's start with the anti-phishing policy. So this is the strict preset security policy that was that is that we just configured, and you can see that everything is turned on. However, there are certain changes. Uh, if you look at the mailbox intelligence action for uh, mailbox intelligence-related 
protection like user impersonation and domain impersonation this actually goes to the quarantining the message instead of actually sending it to the user's mailbox or user's junk mailbox folder similarly if the email is detected as poof uh, the, it will instead of landing it to the junk mailbox folder, which was the configuration item on the standard preset policy. Here it is more stricter, so it is actually going to go to quarantine the message instead of sending it to the user's junk mailbox folder. Also, <clears throat> you can see here uh, the advanced phishing threshold is not on number two, but number three. So this is even more aggressive than what it was uh, with the standard preset policy. Again, you can't change any of these policy items that are pre-configured and uh, best from the best practices perspective and from the recommendation perspective from Microsoft. Uh, similarly, if I go back and then look for, let's say, safe attachment policy, the safe attachment policy is also configured with a strict preset uh, policy here, which blocks the, you know, you, you, the email going to the user, uh, not just the current, but also future email with the same attachment, which is detected with malware. And also the redirect in attachment is also disabled over here. Similarly, uh, if I look at safe link policy, the safe link policy is also configured with the st strict presets where the safe URL scanning is enabled. Uh, wait for URL scanning to complete before delivering the message is also enabled. It applies safe link to the internal emails are enabled. And here also the configuration with, with, with respect to not track the users when users click is disabled, which means that we would like to track the user when the user click on a URL then gets blocked. And uh, we also don't want the users to basically go through or click through the original URL, which is kind of malicious. So yeah, so these policies are all configured by itself. So, so yeah, if you are just deploying Office 365 ATP to your users to protect themselves uh, from malicious campings of malware and fish and user impersonation, domain impersonation, uh, domain spoofing, please feel free to start with the preset configuration policies, which takes like less than 30 seconds to implement. And then you can make customized policies for different organization, group, uh, and so on and and make it you know optimized as per your organization needs as per the tolerance that you have against uh, various uh, uh, emails that are coming from your customers your partners and maybe from the other third parties so so yeah uh, please go ahead and try this out and uh, let me know what you think thank you so much for joining in today watch out for similar videos that i'm going to create uh, which are from uh, from the perspective of some of the new things that were added in Office 365 uh, threat protection stack. And we'll go through some of them in our other videos followed by this one. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.